Ever since Amazon conquered the online book market, people have been forecasting the death of the local bookstore. But that longtime feature of Main Street America refuses to disappear. In fact, one shop in downtown Los Angeles is harnessing digital media to win global fame. CBS Sunday Morning correspondent Lee Cowan takes us to the store that calls itself the last bookstore. It all starts at the steps. The promise of westerns and thrillers and mystery lure you up to a mythical, magical place. You almost want to get lost in this literary labyrinth. Here, books fly. Time stops. Gravity is suspended. Everywhere you look, books are celebrated. And where there aren't books, there's art. Everything from imagined space-age gadgets to a woolly mammoth gazing down on the mammoth collection of books below. When you see it in person, it's a lot, lot better than in video. It's like vintage, very eclectic, it's unique. If you've never heard of the last bookstore in downtown Los Angeles, don't be the last to visit. It's a cavernous place where old media and social media collide, sort of like the Big Bang, only quieter. Hashtag hungry Instagrammers eat up photo ops like catnip. While more traditional bookworms lounge on couches, lost in the universe at their fingertips. A lot of people just come in off the street and they don't even know what's happening, you know? <laughs> and so they're just like, what is this? What, you know, what's going on here? It's amazing. More than being visually stimulating, it, there's also an ambiance here that you can't deny. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Owners Josh and Jenna wrong. Spencer have been told that the last bookstore is one of the most Instagrammed in the world. They're fully aware of the irony that the digital age, often credited with killing books, is here keeping them alive. But that wasn't your intent, though, to make it Instagrammable, right? It was, actually. Everyone was talking about the bookstores being passe and nobody was buying books anymore. And so I thought, well, I've got to do something to get people's attention, you know? So I was like, well, I'm just going to make something that looks really, really cool and that people are going to want to take pictures of, and then they're going to spread the word for us. And, and so they did. Beyond its photogenic properties, the last bookstore is a reminder that books are meant to be tangible. Turning a page instead of swiping one matters to a lot of folks. Just reconnecting myself to the past just by holding these books is golden. Paul Gardner is a visiting librarian. A lot of ways, it's sort of like a pilgrimage. Yes, a lot of these books are old friends of mine that I haven't seen in forever. The last bookstore's warehouses are a rabbit warren of millions and millions of donated books stacked floor to ceiling. Easy peasy. And Josh and his team sort through every single one. So, I mean, that's kind of what we do all day is just dig for treasure. Growing up in Hawaii, Josh never imagined he'd one day open a bookstore, although there were some early hints. I mean, I've always been a reader. I mean, my mom likes to tell the story that I, you know, at five years old, my friends wanted me to go outside and play, and I had to tell them, no, I'm reading the dictionary. I can't come out right now, you know, so. <laughs> but life can turn a page for you, whether you want it to or not. I was 21, and uh, I was riding a moped and just got in a terrible accident, ended up being paralyzed from the waist down. That was clearly a new chapter in his life, which oddly, circled right back to the beginning. Prior to that accident, I was very physical. I'd gotten away from my first love of reading. I was just more into playing volleyball and surfing and lifting weights and things like that. So the accident turned out to be a good thing in a way in that it thrust me back into the world of books because I was like, well, now I've got to figure out some other way to be, you know. He started selling cookbooks on eBay. Then he had a small store. And then he found this old bank, a beautiful relic just like books, he thought. I just sat in here for a few hours just kind of imagining what it could be. The wheels were turning. <laughs> They're still turning. So what was the bank's vault horror. is now home to the horror and true crime yeah, section. Fitting, yeah. <laughs> How fitting. For years I've wanted to find like an old fashioned like electric chair and put it here in the center, <laughs> have like a prop, you know, but uh, I've never been able to find an electric chair for sale, so. He may do with other oddities, yeah. like a tunnel made of more than a thousand old volumes that his dad helped him build. Just how it stands is a secret that many have tried to uncover. Once in a while, somebody will manage to pry a book out of the tunnel and steal it. 
Seriously? We have to figure out how to replace it, yeah. <laughs> Thieves aside, the book business is apparently booming. He and Jenna have opened a second store, Lost Books, where you enter through a twinkling jungle. And these are all real plants? These are all real plants, 365 real plants. Yeah, it's all growing, yes. And so the shape of the tunnel changes um, as the months move on. There's tropical fish, and the ceiling is covered with moss. And you can buy just about anything that's growing, right along with the books. So do people buy more books or more plants? That is the question. <laughs> It's so new, they really don't know. It's a risky venture, just like the last bookstore was more than a decade ago. It didn't matter if I lost everything trying to do it. It was important to me, and I couldn't imagine anything else that I could personally do that was more important. He sees books as the keeper of human knowledge. Our history, our achievements, our dreams, his too. He could have given up after his accident, but books helped bring him back to a place of purpose and passion for which all readers should be thankful. That's the key to life in a lot of ways, is difficulties, obstacles, challenges. You know, that, that's the secret door that you have to go through to really get to the real good stuff of life. For CBS Mornings, I'm Lee Cowan, in the not-so-last bookstore, after all. Such a great piece. I've always felt like bookstores are candy shops for adults. Mm. Yeah. And there's nothing sweeter than a good read. That is yeah. true. A book will change your life, and so will a bookstore. That's right.